Hello everyone and welcome to the Platitude Era podcast. In this episode of the podcast, we will be reviewing Bad Boys for Life. So, um, Bad Boys for Life. Is this the fourth film? Yes, the fourth film in the, uh, in the Bad Boys Michael Bay trilogy. Uh, this movie shows why it's um, very difficult to have a franchise movie. Uh, earlier in the early 90s, late 90s, you had the action movie craze, the Lethal Weapon movies, the Die Hard movies were really pushing for a franchise. And then you along came Bad Boys, which was supposed to be the new Lethal Weapon. And I remember being really excited for it when I was a kid. You had the two biggest stars on TV, Martin from the TV show Martin Lawrence, and you had Will Smith from the show Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And it was supposed to be what today times are uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe or DC Universe where you had two big TV stars uh, starring in an action film. And it was supposed to be the next generation, lethal weapon for the next generation. And then they made the second movie. And that one was pretty much Michael Bay returning to his roots as a music video director. The film felt more of a music video. And then the franchise went on hiatus for a really long time and was recently brought back in 2020. Without Bay returning. Without Bay returning, which the new director seemed to borrow some of the Bayisms, the, the style and the flair of what Michael Bay did with the Bad Boys franchise. But he figured out a way to make the story continue moving and not making those flares and those shots be a distraction from the story in my opinion eh, it was a weak facsimile of michael bay's style if you ask me and uh this movie it, uh, the action lacked the certain uh you know over the toppiness i felt pretty in an era where the marvel cinematic universe can have 10 years of you know special effects improvements and a john wick movie can have uh, wild, intense uh, choreography. This movie felt. This movie is a Sony movie, is it not? Yes. Feels like a Sony movie. And uh, all of the budget and none of the care or coordination. It it seems Sony had earlier executives that didn't know what they were doing. They were excited to be executives at Sony at the movie business, but didn't know what to do. And I guess after um, Amy Pascal was let go as an executive for Sony. They bump somebody up and he's re-looking at all the properties Sony has and says, why aren't we turning this into a franchise? And this movie, Bad Boys 4, it feels like um, they're borrowing the formula from Fast and the Furious. Yeah, I have a, a feeling in your uh, Sony playbook of revitalizing franchises that were once dead. And it's like, oh, what's popular right now? Uh, old, old uh, action movies? What do we have in the uh, action movie playbook? <laughs> Oh, this uh, old Michael Bay movie, but he doesn't want to do shit anymore. Uh, get some other guys to do it. We'll see. You know, people people have a fun. Will Smith's having a oh a Will a Smith the song or, or a Will Smith songs. Why not bring him back? Everybody loves him, but we got to get that Martin guy. We'll see if we can dig him out of retirement for like half a million more than we paid him for the last one. He won't care. And um, this movie, it seems like they're going into that direction, right? The Fast and the Furious direction. It seems like they're trying to start a new franchise. Yeah, there is a little bit of an emphasis on bringing in kind of like the new batch or, you know, the, the, the freshman class or whatever. It seems interesting because that's like when I was watching this, I was reminded of Expendables 3. where like, hey, what if we move on from the old folks and bring in the new people who are less interesting and less charismatic? We'll do that for this movie, too. And it has just as much success. And uh, there's a couple things here, but it would have to be spoilers. So just as a way to start wrapping it up. Um, shoot, I lost my place. So what's your recommendation for this movie? Uh, I'd say skip it because I was not a big fan of it. I thought that uh, it felt like exactly what I said before. It felt like a cheap facsimile of a Michael Bay movie. It didn't really like watching Bad Boys 2 just watching the the highway scene alone which is like in the first 30 minutes of bad boys 2 just speaks waves and volumes for what this franchise could be versus what i saw on this one which is it just feels like a hollow version of itself it did it, it, like the none of the action really grabbed me none of it just blew my mind away most of it was forgettable the plot was some dumb nonsensical 
soap opera retconning of what happened in the past. Not that I ever really cared about what the story of the Bad Boys movies were, but this was some dumb nonsense that I didn't care about. Uh, none of the new characters interested me. The only reason you go to see this movie is for the core trio. And uh, this, when I say the core trio, I mean Cap and the two boys themselves. And this movie does not, for me personally, I mean, there's a lot of Will Smith because, you know, he's a big star right now. But Martin Lawrence was kind of the comedic core for me. And you just don't see him that much. You see him kind of play by himself because he's like, oh, well, he's retired. So what if he's at home trying to work his TiVo out and his... You get some of that, you get a couple chuckles here, but a lot of, you know, the, Brad Bo the Bad Boys formula relies on the back and forth with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, which I didn't feel this movie had enough of. Our friends at Rotten Tomato gave this movie a certified fresh 77%. The audience that went on Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 96. You say skip it. I say watch this movie when you get a chance. I had a good time. I enjoyed this movie. I like the uh, chemistry between Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Like you said, there wasn't that much of it, but when it was there, it was enjoyable. It kept me entertained in the, my seat at the movie theater. And also I liked how they were able to incorporate the age of Will Smith and Martin Lawrence into the movie as they were getting older and it was difficult for them to continue doing police work. That's when they started bringing in the youth and it wasn't like a handing of or a passing of the torch from the old guys to the new guys, but it was more uh, the new guys were assisting us and were mentoring them. It'd be like a total failure of the franchise if the Fast and the Furious movies decided, you know who's really the stars of the show? The new class. You know, bring Tyrese and Ludacris. They're the future. No, Vin would never have it that way, and neither should Will Smith or Martin Lawrence. Keep it to yourselves, boys. We don't need, we don't need no Vanessa Hudgens, no big buff tech guy and um, guy from that uh, sad uh, romance movie that nobody saw. Guy from sad romance movie that's trying to be the new Will Smith. Is he? Because they had that interaction, Will Smith and, and that one guy. And you could tell that he's like, oh, he's the new Will Smith. He's got an attitude problem. He thinks he's the fresh prince. Nah, no, no charisma, no nothing interesting. Like I said, you fold in some new people just because they're semi-recognizable. doesn't mean, you know, they have the explosive charm or charisma of a Will Smith or Martin Lawrence. So you don't need them. Writers of this movie... They're the most forgettable parts, as well as some of the action, but I digress from that. I'm glad you brought up uh, writing in this, because it seems like the movie was supposed to go in a couple of different directions, and it had to go through several rewrites. We went. <laughs> I felt like there was a, a part where they were trying to introduce a supernatural element, and then they scrapped it. Supernatural? Yeah. Oh, but eh, it was a stupid, it's a stupid movie, so whatever. Yeah, I felt like that's what the executive said. No, that supernatural part is stupid, has nothing to do with... Well, I guess you could have the, you know, it, it's like, uh, well, I guess the Bad Boys franchise doesn't really tie into this, but just the idea of, because what, what the first Sherlock Holmes Guy Ritchie movie does that, and it kind of makes sense in that world, I guess, maybe, but to put it in this movie where it never belonged feels out of place. You say that, but then you never know until you try it and how the audience reacts. Like, show some quote-unquote mysticism and then have you realize, oh, that guy's just a, uh, like a sleight-of-hand magician, uh, a hack. <laughs> All right, everybody. This is the best part. This is my favorite part, but it's always hard to work in. The spoiler talk. So we're going to do a quick spoiler because I have something I really want to say and want to get off my chest. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, Bad Boys, depending on which way you're leaning, my side or his side, uh, pause this podcast watch it then come back or hey welcome to spoiler talk this is spoiler so i don't know if any of you remember that episode of the simpsons where homer and marge go on a date there uh there's people waiting to watch empire strikes back homer and marge come out and they say wow who would have thought darth vader was luke skywalker's father i had one of those moments i was waiting to watch bad boys for life and there were some people coming out of the movie and saying the guy they got to play Will Smith's son looks just like him. And while I was watching the movie, did this happen for you? Did you know right away who Will Smith's son was? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was, I mean, in hindsight, I guess it makes sense. It, I was so not interested in the story that I didn't care, didn't feel like a major plot point for me. So even if I was spoiled on that, I don't think I would have cared. But I guess my arms would have been folded over each other even harder. 
So sure, I guess it matters. Because I was watching the movie and I never figured it out who was Will Smith's son. There's only so many people in the movie. Yeah, but I'm thinking, you know, in the beginning of the movie, oh, that's who Will Smith's son. They found a baby that looks just like Will Smith. Mm. Or at the end, somebody's going to say, I'm your daddy, like in the movie Big Daddy. Spoiler for Captain America Winter Soldier, <laughs> but there's only so many characters in the franchise. And if you're hiding someone's face for who the antagonist is, it's probably someone of significance for a protagonist. Now, the only reason why I figured out who Will Smith's son was before Will Smith was because the director of this movie said, oh, I want to come up with this really cool shot of foreshadowing. But he didn't know how to do foreshadowing properly, and it was more of a giveaway. It even had that dun-dun-dun song. Well, yeah, this movie was a stupid soap opera. Well, that's all we have. Wait, 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 stop, because I don't give a shit about, I, I, you know, I have an important spoiler to talk about, and all you have is fucking garbage for me. <laughs> Going back to who gives a shit about the new class. I don't care about Will Smith's son. The only person I want to see is Will Smith and maybe Martin Lawrence, too. And all you want to talk about is fucking Will Smith's son. But you're forgetting the most important spoiler of this movie is if you're going to do Joey Pants that dirty, why even bring this franchise back at all? Because as far as I'm concerned, without Joey Pants, why should I care about the, you know, these characters? That, that's the fun of this. Like, you're talking about, you know, Lethal Weapon or just kind of cliched 80s cop drama cop cop, cop dramedies or whatever you kind of always need the angry captain that's yelling at the boys and it's like you're out of line you can't do this you, you don't play by the rules and joey pants was that perfect that perfect character for them but then you just get rid of him midway through the movie and i'm just like now i have even less of a reason to care he was one of the best he was one of the best anchors in the movie and you just get rid of him just in a snap well to add to your thing it was so quick that I completely forgot that he died. It was more important than who's with me good. I don't care about Will Smith's fucking son. I don't care that they try to do a, a mid credit scene that's like teasing him for a sequel that I'm not very interested in watching. Well, I wasn't even talking about that thing, but those two points that you bring up. But are... I know you bring it up. As, the only reason you bring up a like there is a Will Smith son is because you want him to be the face of the franchise, but nobody cares. That's right, because he doesn't have the charisma. The only reason people want to see this movie is for the two leads and that one main ca supporting character. Even though they might not have been thinking about it, he's pretty important to the franchise. The trinity of bad boys. Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, and Joey Pants. And those were two examples of how this movie, Bad Boys for Life, was trying to copy the formula from Fast and the Furious. In Fast and the Furious, they had a character that was liked who died, which was Will Smith's... Or, I'm sorry, Vince... Vince Papali's <laughs> best friend mm -hmm. Han mm -hmm. died, and then ben you Diesel's had best friend Han in Bad Boys for Life. You had the one character that was a ripoff of Jason Statham, who was a cold-hearted killer that looks like later in the franchise is gonna join the team and be a good guy. But I don't care. Like the the only like at least I'm some even. It's so weird how Tokyo Drift people look fondly on when before people gave you know gave no shits about it. So I'm like bring back the guy from three. Everybody loved that guy from three. Except nobody's gonna love Will Smith's son when Bad Boy, Bad Boys Five Life comes out. Well, I hope he takes some acting classes and gets tips from Will Smith how to be more charismatic. Or he dies off screen. I'd like that even more. Assuming people forget about that quote unquote mid credit scene. All right, everyone, we're done. We could talk about this all day, but we got to move on to the next review. Bye.